James Holder for Icon TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbell. We've got the WBL Intercontinental Champion and Commonwealth Champion Tommy Langford in Wales. Congratulations on the emphatic win here on the Ice Arena. Talk me a little bit through the scrap, mate. Um, it was what it was, really. You know, it, it was a late replacement. My uh, the German lad I was supposed to fight pulled out earlier this week, so I'm just delighted that I got to defend the WBO title one. And you know, we got the replacement in time. Um, it was, it was, it was what it was. It was a back to work fight. You know, he came in and he he tried to survive, and obviously it was up to me to find the openings. I, a couple of rounds probably could have, uh, you know, been. A, I was accused of sort of punching the same areas, but then as soon as I sort of started finding openings and really let them go to get him out of there. That, Job was done really. Is it effective preparation when someone like Tino Lang comes in at short notice and you've sort of prepared for a different sort of fighter? Does that affect you coming in? Um, to be honest, not so much this time because we have found more, fo more footage on that Timo Lane than we did on the German, so it didn't make too much difference. But it was, um, you know, I, I know that I've just got to do what I set out to do in the ring, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be right. You know, we work very hard in the gym, me and Tom, and as long as I follow his instructions, then I'll be successful on a night. What can you tell me about the punch that ended the fight in the seventh round, or the, the flurry of punches yeah. in case? Well, to be fair, I was hitting him with everything really, so it was just a case of once I let one go, <laughs> letting a series of 20 go, and it got, you know, it just caught him with two or three solid right hands, and he, he didn't answer back in time. And, you know, to be fair, I'd been all over him for a few rounds. I think you could have made an excuse that it could have been stopped a bit earlier, but, you know, so I had to do, I had to get him out of there. Um, at some point, it wasn't, wasn't going to 10. I wanted to get him out of there, so I did that, really. You're moving up and gaining good momentum now, moving to 17 and 0. Now, potentially, do you think you could go back to Birmingham and maybe put on headline in some of these shows? Is that something you thought about? Yeah, well, you know, I, I really do want to do that. Um, I've, I, you know, I brought 300 fans down here, so, you know... You do that consistently. Travelling well. away, I bring fans, so, you know, if I fought at home, I'd, I'd, I'd fill up a place, really, but... I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm really happy with the way it's going and the way I'm being built up and guided along. So all I've got to do is keep racking up the Ws and you know the big, the big, the big fights are going to come. And you know, obviously, I've been made mandatory to the British title. So mm -hmm. just got to wait and see what happens with that now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Corkman and Williams tonight, mm -hmm. big, big fight. How do you see that playing out? Um, well, I'm a good mate of Liam Williams, and I've done a lot of sparring with him. So I'm going to say him no matter what. But like to be fair, it's a very, very good fight. Um, Corcoran in his own right is a difficult opponent. He, you know, he's very busy, really active, very fit in your face. So Williams has got to be on his game and he's got to stick to his boxing. But as long as he sticks with his boxing, uh, I believe he'll, he'll break Corcoran down and, and probably stop him. On the sort of co-main event, if you like, Jazza Dickens taking on pound, one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world in Guillermo Rigondeau. How, what chances do you give of Jazza Dickens of being successful tonight? Um, I just think... He's got to, he's, well, he's going to anyway. He's going to, he's got to throw everything at Rigondo. Um, a kitchen sink, if, if possible. <laughs> you know, I think he's, he's got nothing to lose. He's got to go out there, and which he's going to do, and he's, you know, wear his heart on his sleeve and do everything he possibly can. I think he's, it's a seriously uphill battle, um, you know, with the slickness of Rigondo, and he's just got a habit of making everyone look bad. So I just hope it's, a, you know, it's entertaining, and I, I, I can't see Jazz of Wicked winning, to be fair, but... You know, he'll, he'll go out and give it everything, so I wish him all the best. Jazza Dickens talking to him, he, he's not underestimating his no. challenge. And if, if anyone believes in himself to a point that they the belief can will them to win a fight, I believe it's, it is Jazza Dickens. Do you have admiration for him in taking such a big big fight and stepping up Do to the plate? Do you know what? Plate? He's got nothing to lose. He's got absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. You know, the likes of uh, Frampton and Quigg have, didn't fight Rigondo. They chose to duck out of it and he's taken it. Drop of a hat. So I just think you just got to give him so much credit, and you know he's not scared of it. He's not worried about what it looks like or how he does. He's just going to go in there and give everything. You know, that's what boxing needs, really. People to do that more often, I think. Mm -hmm. So fantastic support for yourself and West Brom and all the lads coming and getting behind yourself. So what what will be the next move from here? You'll have a break over the summer. Then what, what sort of go? <clears throat> I've just got a week off, really. Just uh, re like just a nice chilled week, nothing too extravagant. Then um, I'm back out in September. And, uh, you know, the purse bids for the um, British title are due April the 8th, no, August the 10th. So, got to see what how that works out and, you know, what happens with them and what happens with Eubank, whether he decides to fight, fight or vacate. So, we'll see what happens and it's looking exciting anyway. Do you think that fight with Eubank can happen with 
being anticlimactic that he didn't get the Golovkin <laughs> fight. Do you think? Do you think he, he, he can be made for his, for a British title defence? Well, I'm mandatory. So if he doesn't fight me, he's got to vacate. That's the that's the that's the end of of it really. I mean, I really don't know. <laughs> You know, all I'm all I'm saying is I'm really looking for, excited for the prospect of fighting him, and I think it'll be a great fight should it happen, and I hope it does. What did you make of the saga from what you've yeah. outside of the sort of will it happen, won't it happen negotiations? Do you know what I, did, I, I didn't pay too much mind to it really. I mean, I let them. You know, they 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 do they do what they want to do really. I mean, I just didn't pay any attention to it really. I, I think um, I didn't really think it would happen. But then, you know, so it was what it was. I mean, you, what, what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? They just they said they were going to never. That's it. Like that's that's as far as it goes, really. Listen, on that note, thank you very much for asking the question so honestly. Congratulations on the win. Enjoy your week break. A little bit of time with, with yeah. your young family as well. Yeah. No doubt you'll enjoy that, mate. And we'll yeah, see you real soon. Cheers, nice one, James. Speak soon. Oh, thank you. Can I just say big thank you to my sponsors, uh, Barcard UK, uh, JS Wright, and. Um, UK display stand. So thank you very much. Top man, thank you, Tommy.